second talk is entitled Fast Correlation Attacks Over Extension Fields, Large Unit Linear Approximation and Cryptanalysis of SNOW 2.0, joint work between Bin Zhang, Chao Shu, and Willie Meyer, and Willie will give the talk. So this is joint work with Bin Zhang and Chao Su. First, I would like to give a brief outline. I start with background and motivation. Then uh, the first topic will be large unit linear approximation and its distribution. The second topic is fast correlation attacks over extension fields. Then we will apply these two concepts to key recovery attack on the SNOW 2 stream ciphers. And we detected that we can improve these results and then I'll come to conclusions. So uh, if you look back, traditional stream ciphers before the European eStream projects were mostly of two forms, namely of uh, combiner generators or filter generators, where you have one or more LFSRs and you have some Boolean com uh, combining or output function. So uh, these two types of ciphers got very early cryptanalysis in particular uh, Siegenthaler had a very early correlation attack for combining generators in already in 1985. So uh, in 1988, Ottmar Staffelbach and myself came up with so-called fast correlation attacks, which have sped up Siegenthaler's attack by using some iterated decoding techniques. So uh, if you look uh, to history, the design and analysis of stream ciphers uh, in history have matched well with the computing technologies in the appropriate period. So in those days, bitwise fast correlation attacks matched well with the hardware-oriented bitwise LFSR-based designs in the 80s and 90s. But uh, many more recent word-oriented stream ciphers uh, 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 are of a kind of a different type, although the global structure still remained the same. But uh, it turns out that the previous fast correlation attacks are not well adapted to word-oriented designs. For example, we have, if you translate the word-oriented uh, design to a bit-oriented design, we have really many feedback taps and a large number of state variables. So we have seen several improvements of fast correlation attacks and, uh, but one open problem remained. How can fast correlation attacks be extended to, to larger units uh, so that they adapt, adapt better to word-oriented primitives? And our aim is exactly to give a comprehensive answer to this problem here. So we have to develop the necessary cryptanalytic tools to bridge the gap between the widely used word-based primitives and the currently available bitwise fast correlation attacks. So we have to develop a new algorithm to look for large unit linear approximations for a suitable class of functions and to, uh, to efficiently compute the corresponding noise distributions. Then we come up with fast correlation attacks over extension fields. Uh, as we know, uh, fast correlation attacks uh, have two steps. We have to First, to generate parity checks as uh, of good quality as possible. And then we have to decode a kind of linear code. Then we apply this to SNOW 2. Uh, I guess successfully, it's not a break, but it's a considerable improvement over existing results. So I come to large unit linear approximations. Here, a large unit means something 2-bit, 4-bit, 8-bit. It could be even 16-bit. For example, if we have a 32-bit entity, then in the bitwise case, we have just a 32-dimensional vector. But in a larger unit case, the basic data unit is maybe 8-bit, and x can be regarded as a four-dimensional vector. So we consider, as is common in uh, linear approximations, uh, we look at binary masks. The, then we look at the inner product of, uh, the, the, of x, which is uh, divided into these units. And then we get uh, 
a value which is over, uh, which has, which is in GF2 to the M. So omega is called the N over M dimensional binary linear mask of X over GF2 to the M. So uh, just for notation, everybody knows what the distribution is. Uh, however, for the squared Euclidean imbalance of a distribution, this is defined as delta of the distribution is 2 to the R, R times the sum of the squared biases. Here, 1 over 2 to the R is just uh, the probability of the uniform distribution. So just to uh, give a very simple example, we have here uh, two inputs, x1 and x2, which are two independent 32-bit random variables, uh, which have been divided into uh, uh, byte entities. So if we assume a binary mask of the form 1, 0, 0, 1, and then the byte-wise linear approximation of the integer sum of these two entities is just uh, the mask times inner product with the integer addition, and the approximation is where we replace the integer addition simply by XOR. Then we get a linear expression. And the efficiency of such an approximation is given by the squared equilibrium imbalance of the distribution, probability distribution of the difference uh, function. So uh, we come to generalized pseudo-linear functions, modulo 2 to the n. Pseudo-linear functions, modulo 2 to the n, have been introduced by Maximov and Johansson at Asia, Asia Crip 205. We generalized this concept to a, a slightly larger class of functions called GPLFM. So x is a set of k uniformly distributed n-bit random variables with xi and gf2 to the n, and C is just a set of n-bit constants, and M is a set of n over m dimensional binary masks of X and C. So uh, we give a definition. Uh, we have the three sets, X, C, and M, and we have A is an arithmetic term. If it has only the operation of arithmetic, uh, for example, it can just be an integer sum of one of many uh, terms. So B is a Boolean term if it only involves Boolean operations, for example, uh, or and and XOR, it might be of the form T1 XOR T2 and T3. And S is a simple term if it's just a symbol or a constant. Uh, so omega times X, uh, X is here one of the terms A, B, or S. It's just the inner product result of the term X with the binary mask. And we call G PLFM uh, a function if it's, it can be recursively be expressed in the inner product of a mask with one of these terms. Again, a simple example. Here we have uh, three inputs for integer addition. And we, in principle, we might have different masks for each term here. And here n is the noise variable. n is just the uh, XOR difference of the true expression uh, added XOR with the linearized expression. So if the modulus sum is over GF2 to the 32, then the straightforward approach to compute the distribution of n needs a rather high complexity of 2 to the 96, which is infeasible to implement in practice. So assume we have this, uh, such a function f of our extended class here, and the, we assume that the basic data unit we are interested in is m bit. So if n is larger than 32 and k, this, the number of inputs is larger at least as 2, then a straightforward complexity is 2 to the n times k. So depending on the masks we are interested in, we split the inputs xi accordingly. And uh, we also we split the function f into n over m subfunctions fi. So this is very easy. And uh, the motivation for this is because for, uh, then we can reduce the problem to uh, the algorithms developed by Maximov and Johansson for their pseudo-linear functions. 
However, there is a problem here. As soon as if we have uh, integer addition, then we have a carry propagation, as we know, and we have to uh, deal with it in an algorithmic way. For this, we use a connection matrix to characterize this connection. So I think this can be illustrated in a picture. So uh, if it's a little bit more complicated than we, that one might think. We have not just a function from gf2 to the m to the k to, to bi, where bi is the output, but we have also to take into account the uh, image of the previous function and a carry vector. Here, uh, this is a vector because we may have s different arithmetic terms here. So, but the procedure is, algorithmic procedure is, uh, we start here with the lowest function and go up step by step. So this is kind of loop then in the algorithm. So uh, as a, again, as an example, a very simple example, we have just integer addition and the mask is just a lower chunk and an upper chunk. And then uh, the first function is just truncation over the lower half, but F2 has now carry expressions here. So uh, I won't go into detail with the algorithm here. Uh, we can just say we have a triple loop, obviously. Uh, and uh, an important thing is that we have, we have to call another algorithm within algorithm one here. And this algorithm two, its aim is just to embed uh, the algorithm by Maximoff and uh, Johansson in our setting, roughly. So uh, one can uh, compute the complexities of both algorithms. I won't go into detail in it. We shall see some applications of them. Uh, but just to give an il illustrative example here, uh, the complexity drops from 2 to the 96 if you would do it just with trial and error to, to or exhaustive search to 2 to the 24, so it's a dramatic reduction. Again, an example, which I mentioned already. So uh, if we would have here uh, three, three summons for integer addition, and if the mask would look like 1, 0, 1, 1 in GF2 to the 4, then uh, we, uh, we would have here uh, this expression here for the noise variable here, and indeed we are able to, the, to compute the distribution of this noise variable in two to the 24 uh, operations. So uh, I won't go into this example here, how to compute this noise distribution. Rather, I skip here to uh, model for fast correlation attacks over extension fields. Maybe you have this, seen this picture already in ordinary uh, fast correlation attacks. It's quite common to model a fast correlation attack by using a discrete memoryless, memoryless channel. So we have the output of an LFSR which is perturbed by some noise. And then we, have, we know the output which is just the key stream and our goal is to determine the contents of the LFSR despite, despite the noise. And this, uh, of course, one way would be just to do uh, uh, exhaustive search over all uh, states of the LFSR until uh, kind of uh, number of agreements uh, is optimized, but this is much far too complicated. So instead, we model the whole uh, scenario as a NL linear code where n is the number of keystream uh, symbols, l is the length of the code, where l is just the length of the LFSR, and, and uh, here we need some other uh, notions. The capacity of a discrete memoryless channel is defined as log 2 to the n minus the entropy. And the code rate, that's just the definition here, is uh, log 2 to the n times l divided by n. So uh, an important thing that we shall need for estimating the complexity and efficiency of our attack is the relation 
between the noise distribution and the capacity of the discrete memory list channel. So uh, CDMC is the capacity, and assume the noise variable has some distribution, then CDMC is just the squared Euclidean imbalance div divided by 2 times ln2. So uh, now I come to the idea which is already known in principle for fast correlation attacks. Uh, we have too many information symbols. We have L symbols. We don't want to get, I guess and determine all symbols. We would like to transfer this initial code into a new code with sm a smaller number of information symbols. Uh, the idea is just to linearly combine uh, columns in the generator matrix given by the LFSR to come up with a code with less information symbols. So there is a trade-off, of course. We might have uh, uh, very few information symbols, but then we introduce a lot of noise. Maybe if we have to linearly combine many columns, then we have very heavy noise. So usually this uh, number of uh, columns to be combined is relatively small. A good guess uh, uh, for uh, ordinary correlation attacks was four, and interestingly here, it's, it's much the same here. So if I express this in this formula, this, this idea, it looks a bit technical, but it's just this idea which I have described in words. To find such uh, good linear combinations, we use Wagner's generalized birthday algorithm to compute the parity checks. So we know that decoding a random linear code over an extension field is NP-hard problem, but it lies at the core of many crypto systems, both symmetric and asymmetric, for example, also LWE. So we use decoding with statistical theory. Then uh, we have a distinguisher I, which uh, could be derived from the LFSR and from the output, where ET is now ET is uh, now the convoluted uh, noise. So in order to recover the right guess, we need to compute the squared Euclidean imbalance of this distinguisher. But this is a vectorial Boolean function, and that we cannot directly apply the fast Walsh transform to accelerate it. We need a lemma uh, to reduce this to uh, to a set of one-dimensional problems. I'll skip this lemma. And uh, the idea is just to split the Boolean function i into n linearly independent Boolean functions i1 up to en. Then we compute the correlation of each i i by established fast Walsh transform. Then we combine this lemma to compute the squared Euclidean imbalance of i. And we can, again, uh, precisely estimate the computational complexity of decoding this uh, improved code C2. So uh, come now to the application, to SNOW2. We see here uh, an LFSR, word-based LFSR. The words are length 32 bit. And we have 16 entities here. And here we have a finite state machine. We see here the output of this machine, and here we, we have two memory words, and these words are updated by these formulas here. Here S uh, is, uh, is derived from the AES block cipher. It's essentially subbytes and mixed column. Snow 2 has served as a benchmark in the uh, benchmark stream cipher in the eStream project, and I think it remains still one of the strongest and fastest stream ciphers available so far. So I think it's an interesting target. So uh, here is a brief uh, uh, description of this uh, function S. Here we see this uh, mixed column, and here we uh, see subbytes. So uh, this is a bit technical here. So I just say we have uh, two expressions here, uh, an upper one and a lower one. Actually, because we have two memory words, we need to consider two consecutive output words in order to reduce the influence 
of the memory because finally we would like to end up between relations between the output and the LFSR entities and we don't like the memory or other terms in it. Here we have two uh, precise expressions derived from this picture here and which, uh, which are heavily nonlinear. We have to linearize them and uh, we use two linear approximations, one and two here. And uh, these are uh, not quite simple. Uh, the second one actually fits into our concept of uh, our appro previous approximations, whereas the first one is of different kind to, to these S-boxes. But fortunately, as we have seen, the S-boxes come in in parallel. So it's possible to uh, de uh, derive uh, an algorithm to compute the, distribu the distribution of the linearization approximation. So I won't go into detail here, but finally we end up with what we would like to have. We have now a uh, masked expression, the XOR sum of consecutive output words, and here we have a linear approximation, a, a, a linear expression in uh, uh, LFSR words plus the noise. And the nice thing is we are able to uh, compute the squared imbalance of the noise. It's 2 to the minus 43.23. So now we are in position to apply the fast correlation attack over GF two to the A to recover the initial state over the GF two to the A to 64, which means the 512 bit state of snow. So uh, for the decoding algorithm, the uh, L is obviously 64, but uh, a relevant thing is the number of bytes we need to guess. And here it turns out an optimal value is 17 bytes, case 17, tau is the the, uh, the number of columns that we combine is four, as predicted, and then the complexity is two to the 186. So that's still a huge number because the key size is 128 bit, but it's already a drop in complexity by a factor two to the 25 compared to the best previous result that dates back to AsiaScript 208. So. Uh, there is one technical issue. Uh, we use the uh, GNU GMP library to compute the squared imb imbalance. We have seen it's a relatively small number, and we have to uh, evaluate it uh, with good precision in order to come up with good uh, complexity estimates. Then we can apply uh, the algorithm one, algorithm one and fast correlation attack over extension fields to a small scale version of Snow. Uh, because we have seen we uh, have many ingredients to be combined for this kind of attack. Therefore, it's essential to uh, verify it on a downsized version. And fortunately, uh, the simulations con fully confirm the theoretical analysis. So uh, interestingly, the, uh, if you look at uh, non-binary masks, then uh, the results are getting even better. I won't go into detail here. But we see that uh, the squared Euclidean imbalance uh, increases a lot. So the, this gives a decrease in total complexity. So the resulting complexity is 2 to the 164, which is almost 2 to the 50 times better than the previous result. So I come to conclusions. I think we answer a well-known open problem in correlation attacks. And we have developed two new cryptanalytic tools to analyze the word-oriented stream ciphers. And we come up as an application with an improved key recovery attack on Snow 2. So uh, there are some open problems. Uh, we know that there are iterative probabilistic decoding methods in the bitwise case for fast correlation attacks. And the question is, can we come up with something similar uh, over uh, larger units? And of course, it would be attractive to see whether other primitives could be uh, cryptanalyzed using similar techniques. Thank you. Thank you very much.